Hello and welcome to the football show on PLZ Soccer's mm. YouTube channel. I'm your host, Adam Binney, joined by Alan Ruff and Tam McManus. Once again, it's the fifth and final show of the week for myself. Normal service resumes. You'll have the gaffer, Peter Martin, back tomorrow. Tam, I've heard some rumours that he's actually back already. He's just dodging it. He's left this one for me. Can you confirm? He just wants to see if you're going to improve any in your last day. Oh. Which hopefully you do. <laughs> um, but no, you've been good this week and one more day to go. Want to go, Ruffy? Have I got it in me? Any mistakes left? Yeah, no, I, I, I can't see any. I can't remember any noticeable uh, mistakes. But I'm sure Peter, being so thorough, will find. <laughs> I have a, a big list on the, on, on the desk for, for Monday morning. Anyway, we jump straight into the quiz question um, for today's show. So, what is the record for the most amount of goals scored in a Scottish Premiership season by one club? That's on screen for us just now. What's the record for the most goals scored in a Scottish Premiership season by one club? I'm sure I you think can it, probably I, guess who the club is, but I, I think it's Celtic, Brendan Rodgers, treble, oh, treble 90, season. 93. 93? I, I think they scored 100 and something. I'm going to go 105. 105? 93. 93 goals or the year 1993? 93 goals. 93 goals, okay. We'll see. Um, leave your answers in the comment section below and we will reveal the the correct answer at the end of the show. You can get involved as well in our competition, which has been running this week, this pair. I've been promoting it all week for a golf day. <laughs> Tom, you've come dressed for the occasion. <laughs> I was actually golfing the day and uh, it was very sunny. And then as soon as I got in run about Carfin, uh, it started to rain. So, it tells you everything you need to know. Ruffy, do you think you'd get away with that outfit if the, the gaffer Peter was still here? Yeah, you? I think <laughs> Peter's known, known for lighting his wear shorts in the show, but uh, you can see why, because he's not really, Peter's not really getting legs for shorts. Really. <laughs> 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 That's terrible. Uh, anyway, if you would like to play alongside the well-dressed Tam McManus up against Alan Ruff and Frank McAvenny, here's how you can win the prize. This week's competition is a chance for you to play a round of golf with Tam McManus against myself and Frank McAvenny. To enter, you must subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel and answer this simple question. Which World Cup did Frank McAvenny and Alan Ruff both play in? Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, fantastic prize for one of our viewers to, to have the chance to play alongside Tam up against Ruffy and Frank. So if you would like to win that, make sure you leave your answer in the comment section below. We're running the same competition across all of our social media channels. Make sure you're entering across all of those channels to give yourself the best possible chance of winning right straight into the football. We've got six big matches this weekend. The first one being Ross County versus Aberdeen tonight. But the big one, Tam, that everyone's looking forward to is Edinburgh Derby. Tomorrow, I'm sure you'll be watching the game. Half past 12, early kickoff at Easter Road. Um, there's been a lot of changes at Hearts this week. I got Ruffy's view on it yesterday, but initially, um, I need to get your view on the, the Robert Snodgrass situation. He's, he's 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 left left Hearts. Looks like he's been he's been shown the door mm -hmm. by whether that be Bodrum or Naismith. We're not quite sure yet. But just your initial reaction to that news? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's Stephen Naismith's decision. I think the the way he's speaking, you know, he's he's obviously played with. I think he's probably played with Snodgrass at, with Scotland a few times. He knows him from England. Maybe he just doesn't think he's going to play this season. Maybe he's looking for a different type of player. Maybe he's looking for more legs in the middle of the pitch. I don't know. Um, they've obviously had an uncomfortable com conversation. But you've got to have that as a manager. You know, sometimes you've got to get in there and you've got to tell experienced players that are not wanted. I've been in that position. I'm sure Ruffy has as well. Where managers just are looking for younger players or a different type of player. So it was a strange one initially. And, you know, with Stephen saying that he, he, he preferred working with younger players as well. So he want, I think Stephen Naismith wants the job. Ultimately, I think he wants the job and he th I think he's got to get in there and try and put his stamp on the team. And I think that's his first big call, first big decision. <coughs> I don't think Robert Snodgrass has been playing particularly well in recent weeks. He started well at Hearts. So I don't think a lot of the Hearts supporters are, are too unhappy with that decision. But the proof will be in the pudding for Stephen uh, if he gets results starting, starting tomorrow. So if Stephen Naismith gets results, he could be in a similar situation to Barry Robson where he goes in as a, an interim boss, gets a lot of results and, uh, and gets the job long term. So I think that Stephen will be looking for the job and I think that's his first big call. Would you have kept Snodgrass if you were in that position, experienced player for the yeah, running? I think it's difficult, we'll know every, every day, I don't see Hearts every day, I don't train every day and see, see him every day. I think it's a big, big call, I really do, I think it's a big call for Stephen Naismith, but as I said, I think a lot of the Hearts fans are on board with it. I think maybe three, four months ago they wouldn't have been because Robert started really well at Hearts. I don't think he's been great as have any of the Hearts players. So I think that I think that Robert will be disappointed that he he's maybe been made to look the scapegoat for the recent bad form. That's how it looks to me uh, as an outsider looking in. It looks as if he's maybe fingered him as, as the root of the, the bad form. So 
Listen, whether, whether Robert hangs the boots up, goes back down to England, I don't know. Um, but I think he'll be disappointed with the way it's ended at Hearts. Well, if you look at the, the state of, of the two teams just now and their performances, neither club's really in a good place. But do you think one has the upper hand in the other? Do you think there's Hearts or Hibs? Who, who do you think's in the, in the better place going into this one? Not in terms of form, but just if you just look straight ahead to this match, who's actually in the better place here? I don't think any of them are in a better place. No. You know, I really Both don't. Both right at the bottom. Yeah, I think <laughs> obviously, you know, Hearts getting beaten 2 nothing at home isn't a result you would want to take into a derby game. You know, I think there was wee glimmers of hope for Hibs last week against Dundee United, but obviously they're not going into the game either. So the reason I went for Hibs is basically because it's a home advantage and they have got players in there who have shown it on the day, but you no guarantee they're going to turn up. Uh, so it's a big game for both of them. You know, I think they both of them know what's at stake. Uh, I'm not just talking about you know where you finish in the league and being third or fourth or whatever. I just think winning the game, winning the game at this precise moment in time for both of them, for the players and the managers, is a be all and end all. And whatever happens after that, you'll take care of it. Yeah, period of transition just now for Hearts with Snodgrass going out, Nielsen leaving the club as well, but Naismith's now in. Do you expect him to make many changes in, uh, this no, weekend? Or so. a similar team? I think it'll be similar. I think he's got a couple coming back. He, he might feel as if they're going to they're going to make a difference. You know, I think uh, goalkeepers coming back, uh, which will be good. He's been, I think, he's been pretty good on the whole for the whole year. But it's up front. You know, Shanklin's sort of dried up. You no, know, unless he gets a penalty. You know, he's, he's, he's not as... You're not going to let that die. He did score a good goal a couple of weeks ago, but apart from that, he's, he seems to be playing a little wide again. You know, he's not like a number nine. He's not like he holding the ball up. He's chasing the ball into spaces which will suit Hibs. You know, I think it'll be easier to mark him out there. But uh, no, I, 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 the only reason I went for Hibs is because of home advantage. That's the only reason. Yeah, Tom, do you expect any changes from Naismith? I think McKinley, the CEO on Tuesday, was made it made a suggestion that some of the new signings that were made haven't really got a chance to, to prove their worth under, under Nielsen. Do you think that's maybe a nod to say under Naismith, under new stewardship, there, there might be some fresh faces in that starting eleven come Saturday? Yeah, possibly. I think the one is, 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 a, is a Australian lad, Gil, from just signed for Newcastle. I think he yeah. came in with a, a lot of fanfare. You know, he played in the World Cup with Australia. I don't think he's had much of a look in. I don't think he's been particularly impressive when he has played, but he could be probably one he's he's maybe looking at as well. So I think Josh Tinelli's possibly coming back as well, who who's a good player, who's had a great season for Hearts. So listen, I agree with Ruffy. Listen, the talking's got to stop, particularly from a Hibs point of view. You know, Lee Johnson's great sound bites for the media. You know, he's, oh, he's great. He's, he's, <laughs> the media love him. You know, he's, he comes out with some great stuff, great copy. But I think the Hibs supporters are getting a wee bit fed up with it and I think they just want to win the game. They just don't want the, they don't want any of the players talking about they're going to do this, going to do that. They don't want any of the management team saying they're going to do this, going to do that. Just do it in the pitch. Just do it on Saturday. Do it tomorrow at half twelve and come off the part where I win. And if you come off the part where I win, you've all but, all but sealed your, your top six and you're in the, in the, in the shake-up for third place. So I, I think it's a bigger game for Hibs. I do. I think, I think it's obviously a big game for Hearts. I think Hearts has basically secured the top six. If Hibs don't win the game, Livingston have got an opportunity to leapfrog them. And uh, for Hibs to finish out with the top six is the end of the manager. So he needs to he needs to win the game. Yeah, we'll can hear from Lee Johnson just now. We've been trying to, to work out if many changes have been made by Hearts, and it seems as though Lee Johnson isn't quite sure either. Yeah, obviously, the, you know, it's, it, it is sort of the land of the uncertain in terms of the shape. The personnel doesn't change, and you know their strengths and weaknesses. And, and they've got a good team. They've got good players. They, you know, they pay good money um, for the division, and uh, it's something that allows you to get good players. But you know, this is a one-off game, and we're at home. And like I say, it's all about us. It has to be about us because um, you know we, we des- our fans deserve that. No. Ruffy, um, just hearing from Wee Johnson there, who could be under a bit of pressure, um, as, as we were discussing, if 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 he lose this one, can you see Wee Johnson getting the bullet? Yeah, the I can. Next? Yeah, yeah. I think again, you know, fans have got a bit of influence in what happens at clubs just now, and uh, I think if if Hearts were to win, say two nothing or something like that, I think the the Hibs supporters will show, you know, what they feel about it. I mean, they've already done it. At a stage during the the season, but uh, he managed to dig out a couple of results. So, but the the fans remember things like that, you know, and they were just the ones that do want him in the job will be waiting, and a poor result. So that's why, as Tam said, he's got to get a win. It must be a win, 
Because if you're right, if you don't get in the top six, it's just a horrendous season for Hibs. If they don't get into the top six, Tam, and they don't win this game on Saturday, mm -hmm. would, you, would you say it's justified if the club get rid of them? 100%. 100%. Yeah. If, if Hibs don't get in the top six this season, the manager's gone. He's, gone, he's got to go. Uh, you know, there's, we've spoken about it so many times. Aberdeen, you know, hopeless for half a season. You know, put a run together now, sitting third. Hearts, on a terrible run. Still sitting up there. You know, Motherwell, I've got a chance in the top six were bottom of the league, you know, two months ago. So there's been no consistency out with Celtic and Rangers. You know, the rest of the team's hearts for a period were, were getting consistent results, but over the last six, seven weeks. So I think it's out with Celtic Rangers, it's the poorest top flight that I can remember in terms of the quality of the teams. And if Hibs don't get in that top six, the manager's, on, his position's untenable. And that, that's, that won't just be me, I would think 99% of Hibs fans would think the same. So, an interesting point you made there about the standard of the rest of the league. Mm -hmm. Do you think then that puts more pressure on managers yeah. of, of Hearts and Hibs? Hearts because we've seen Nielsen go for, for mm -hmm. sitting in fourth place, given the perceived lack of quality with, with the rest of the teams. Is, is, is that perhaps why people like Nielsen and Johnson are, seem to be under more pressure this yeah, season? Yeah, I think it is. I think you know, Aberdeen as well, Jim Goodwin. Yeah. You know, they were they're having a poor season, chopped them. You know, Robbie Nielsen, you know, they're, they're sitting you know, third or fourth all season, basically. They've got rid of the manager. So, you know, Hibs are, 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 are have got to be in the top six in this country, in this league. You know, Celtic Rangers, Hearts, Hibs, Aberdeen. You know, that's got to be the basis of your top five. And then maybe a Livingston or a St Martin or something like that gets in the top six. So for Hibs to be out with it, I, I, I don't think the, the Hibs fans would stand for it. I think there'd be, there'd be protesting outside the, the ground uh, if, he, if he doesn't get sacked, if they don't finish in the top six. So it's two massive games for Lee Johnson. <laughs> you know, he, he, I think he can't get beat this game. I think if he draws it, you know, and, and the, it'll go to the next game, the last game. I think they've got St Johnson away. If they get in the top six, I think they might might give him another season. If they lose the game to Hearts, I think he, he's, he's under real pressure. He's losing his job. Ruffy, would you agree? Yeah, I think so. I think top six is where Hibs have got to be. You know, and, uh, you know, it, I'm sure the Hibs supporters that go there week in, week out, will see uh, how poor they've been this year. You know, and you're, you're right. Dan's right, all the other teams are poor. I mean, I'm hazarding a guess here that apart from Rangers and Celtic, all the rest of the teams have got a negative goal difference. I think Hearts have plus three. Yeah, hearts, hearts have plus three, but everyone else is, yeah. I mean, no, I've never seen that in my life. I've never seen that in yeah. my life either. You know, that just shows you how poor they've all been and how they've all been, some of them have been equal of each other, you know, and uh, you, there is always one team comes out of the pack. You know, I thought it was going to be Livingston's for a wee while, but then they've hit a, a bad spell as well. So... No, it has been, apart from Rangers and Celtic, and I'll throw Hearts into that as well. I think Hearts, for the majority of the season, have been all right, you know, apart from that last five or six weeks there. So, no, they've, they've gained their fans, well, I think they've given the fans a good run, but it depends where they finish up as well. Is there a risk with this? Because we're, we're talking about Wee Johnson potentially losing his job if they fail to meet top six, but Hibs have gone through countless managers in, in the last few years and it's never quite worked. Is there a, a big risk attached to that then that maybe the, the Hibs board and those in the higher positions at the club are thinking, we need to just wait this one out because it hasn't worked given the bullet so early to everyone else before off it? Well, every manager has a remit at the beginning of the season. He, he comes in and he asks for a, board, uh, a budget, you know, and the board give him the budget or they don't give him the budget. But then they'll say, here are our targets. Our, our targets are definitely top six. Biggest target was would be we want to be in Europe. You know, you're now the manager, we're giving you X amount of pounds, you have to make that happen. And if he doesn't make it happen, he, he's been in the game long enough to know that uh, the pressure's on him to do it. You know, and if he doesn't do it, then particularly so negative, I mean, we're, 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 we're discussing him not being in the top six and not being in Europe. And that are the things that the board will react on because there's plenty of managers out there looking for a job. Well, I would say Adam is roughly right at the start of the season. Mm -hmm. I think Lee Johnson sits down and he says, right, this is where we should be. Hibs get put out in the group stage in the League Cup. Morton top to group. Hearts beat them in the early round of the Scottish Cup. So they're out in both the rounds early and they finish in the bottom six, possibly. I think even Lee Johnson would think he wouldn't keep his job. Well, we've got a comment here, Tam, from Wacky Gold saying that Hibs have no right to be in the top six. Be quiet, Tam. That's what he says. What was your reaction to that? Oh, I, I, listen, I don't think... But, but, but do, you, do you think Hibs fans are maybe, maybe feel in, entitled to be in the top six or do you think that they absolutely should be given the size of the club and the resources? Given the size of the yeah. club, the budget, you know, the training, everything associated with Hibs are, are a top four, top five club in, in Scotland every day of the week. You cannot finish in the, top, the, the bottom six. 
I was reading a stat the other day. I think Sean Maloney got sacked when Hibs won fifth. Hicken Bottom got sacked when Hibs won sixth. And they had more points. I think he had more points than currently the Lee Johnson. So, listen, the Hibs supporters have got high expectations, sometimes too high. But I don't think it's I don't think it's a high expectation to expect Hibs to finish in the top six in Scottish football. We've spoken plenty about Hibs manager Lee Johnson, but let's hear from the man in the opposite dugout on Saturday. New interim Hearts manager Stephen Naismith. I will give them opportunity. I've got a meeting with them this afternoon to tell them things will change in terms of what is expected of them. If they are training, if they're in the first team group today, they'll be a first team player for the day. So they come in, they use the first team facilities. They prep like a first team player and they train like a first team player. Tomorrow when they're back in, if they're back with the B team or the A teams, they're doing their jobs, they're in that environment and that's the way it'll work. So we'll give them opportunity. If they can cut it and be there, which I think they can, they'll be around it more. If they can't, they need to go back and work harder and get back in. Tom, is that an important thing for, yeah. for the Hearts fans and, and, and for everyone at that club to make sure your players are, are given a chance? Yeah, I think through? it's a massive thing. I think when you've obviously, you know, Hearts B team are in the lone league. They're getting a lot of experience, all these young boys. I've seen them a couple of times, actually. They've got a lot of good young players coming through. Robbie Nielsen, for me, wasn't given enough of them an opportunity. Um, he's got a big squad at Hearts. Hearts have got a massive squad. You know, so maybe there wasn't the room, but I think with Stephen Naismith, he knows them, he knows them well, Donald Partson then as well. I think he'll, he'll be aware of the ones that he thinks can step up. And I think you will see maybe one or two or three more, maybe on the bench, in the squad, in the match day, just to try and get... Listen, Hearts and Hibs fans want to see their young players coming through. You know, it's great, and, and Hibs have been guilty of the same this season. You know, and I've been vocal on this show before. Hibs are not giving enough of their young players a chance either. You know, and there's too many substandard foreign players or loan players have been playing instead of the young players, and I think Hearts are in the same boat. And I think that was maybe one of the reasons as well why Robbie, Robbie Nielsen gets sacked, that he wasn't maybe given enough of these young boys for the B team or whatever, more opportunities in the first team. Is that why someone like Naismith, do you think, makes a perfect candidate, Ruffy, for this yeah. job, given he's, he's been in the B team, he's worked with players like Bobby McClurkey, Mackenzie Kirk, Murray Thomas, boys like that, that Naismith knows and has worked with on a daily basis, could make the step up? Yeah, that's got to be part of it. I think the board have looked at that, you know, said that seems to be the road they want to get in, and uh, if you're going to get in that road, you know, you've got to have somebody in charge who knows them inside it. You know, not every one of them are going to hack it, but... If he thinks there's a couple of them due a chance, then I'm sure the supporters would love that. If they come in and they, they produce some kind of form, you know, it's great. I always think it's good, you know, when you go to a game and you see two or three boys that have come through the academy. I mean, a lot of them have been there for, what, 12, Tom? 12, mm. 13, 14, mm. coming up. And all of a sudden, bang, they're in the programme, they're in the squad. And I don't know if they do it at Hearts, but we do it at Partick Thistle. We have a wee asterisks beside their name to let them know that they're an academy player and there was a few times last year that Ian McCall gave I think four or five of them and I, th I think the fans responded to that. Not a lot of them got, got a chance to get to see what they can do but when you're a young boy and you're, you're all of a sudden you're in the first team squad it gives you an enormous kick, you want to be there, you, you sample what it's like to be sitting on a bench, you sample if you get five or ten minutes in a game playing in front of 18,000 people so it's a way ahead, but it's up to the young boys and all to sort of grab it, because there's not a lot of them breaking through just now at any of the clubs. Tom, you've been a young player yeah. at Hibs, broke through and then went on to, to play in Edinburgh derbies. What does it actually take? Because we know, of course, you need to be a great football player, technically you need to be good, but in these derby matches, I think it takes a little bit more than that. There's, a, there's, there's all the emotion involved and what it means to the fans. For these young boys that want to try and make a difference, whether that be for Hearts or Hibs, what do they actually need? What are the qualities that you look for in these young players? I think you need to have you need to have a strong mentality. I think when you are thrown into those games, and my first ever start for Hibs was in an Edinburgh derby at Tynecastle, when Alec McLeish threw me into the game, and I played well that day because. I felt as if there was very little pressure or expectations. <laughs> that, actually, you know. that just rubbishes uh, everything I'm just saying. There, <laughs> but, no, but yeah, listen, you've, you've got to have a strong mentality and you've got to have quality as well. And uh, you know, you've got to be able to you stand up and ask for the ball. You know, it's an intimidating atmosphere, whether that's at Easter Road or Tyne Castle. You've got to be brave to get on the ball. You know, you've, you can't hide. Um, John Hughes in, in the dugout, uh, uh, sorry, in the tunnel at Tyne Castle said to me, "If you hide today." You'll not have all the, oh, the fans to worry about you, but what about me? Uh, so <laughs> I'm not allowed too. to hide and I ask for the ball all the time. So you've got to demand the ball and get on the ball and show you're, show you're a good player. And uh, unfortunately, and Ruffy's right, you know, there was a there was a statistic uh, maybe a month ago about the young players coming through in Scottish football. There's not a lot in the Premier League uh, getting opportunities. And I think that's something that we've got to look at. And it's something that, that Hibs and Hearts have always had a tradition of bringing young players through. But 
I can't remember off the top of my head, you know, somebody might correct me on the feed. When was the last young player that came through to Hibs or Hearts in the, in the last year or 18 months that's now a regular on the team? Doig, but he's been sold. Hickey, but he's been sold. Last well, year, yeah. 18 months. Who, who from and Josh Hibs? Campbell is, is playing just uh, now. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's probably him. Hearts, is there any? The current Hearts squad. You know, so that's. I think Craig Gordon might be the only academy gra- <laughs> graduate left of that. that, that <laughs> and that's why probably that, you know, the Hearts B team, that's why, they, that's why they're in the Lone League. It's a bridge between reserve football and first team. And uh, the Hearts supporters must be pulling their head out thinking, where are all these boys that are playing in the B team and doing well? They're not getting an opportunity in the, in the first team. So, yeah, I, I, it does dismay me at times when, when I look at team sheets and I don't see a lot of young players on the bench are coming through. And uh, I think that we've got to improve that. But they've got to deserve it. You know, maybe they don't deserve it, maybe they're not good enough, maybe the crops coming through is not good enough. I don't know, but it'd be good to see more. Ruffy, you've played in Edinburgh derbies mm-hmm. as well. What are your memories of, of what that fixture is like and what it really means to the people of Edinburgh? It's a nightmare because I never won one. <laughs> 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 draw a few. I, mean, I played, I think, the record is 16 uh, Hibs Hearts games and uh, I never won one. But, uh, <sighs> But we drew, even Alan, I, I think, think we three. drew. No, I think we drew nine. To, to be fair, it's I think one as many of them the derbies as me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we drew. I think me. But at that time, Hibs weren't doing particularly well financially. Uh, Hearts were away ahead of us. You know, Hearts would be Robo and Gary Mackay and mm. Big Sandy. They they the better players than us. But uh, uh, so it was a long, long two or three years. You know that uh, to. Coming away was a we a draw and light is losing all the time was a bonus you know so but it is you know I keep saying that if you live in Edinburgh and you're you're part of the the team you know it means a lot more to you if you're an Edinburgh boy we'd be Paul Kane and and Mickey Weir and mm. and all the young boys who all came for Edinburgh and they were coming through and they made a difference you know because they you get thrown into a Hibs Hearts game you're a local boy you know you just don't want to get beat because you know everything that's going to come with it. But uh, it's an incredible occasion to, to, to play in these games. You know, they are great. I mean, everybody talks about Rangers and Celtic, quite rightly, and Dundee and Dundee United. But Hibs Hearts games are fantastic. It's a sellout. Great. It's a sellout tomorrow yeah. as well. First so, time in a while, Easter Road's been yeah, a sellout. Yeah, it's going to be packed. So, listen, the atmosphere will be, will be brilliant, and uh, that can be a good thing for Hibs if they go a goal up. But it can be a bad thing if they go a goal down. Score prediction. I'm going to go for 2 1 Hibs. I've got no rhyme or reason. Both teams are in horrific form. I'm just going to go with my heart and say 2 1 Hibs. Ruffy? I've went 2 1 Hibs as well. Same as Tom. No <laughs> <reason. laughs> Home advantage. Home advantage. That's what I'm, I'm banking on. And I saw wee glimpses last week against Dundee United. You know, the ball just came by the post, you know, and a header just been off target. And, but both of them are poor. So it's, for me, it's whatever one turns up on the day. They've all got players who who can win matches, so it depends which ones turn up. Yeah, really looking forward to it. I'll be at Easter Road tomorrow bringing you all the latest from that match across all of our social media channels. We'll be joining the boys later on on the football show live from Easter Road to bring you the reaction from both sets of managers. And Tam, it's my first ever Edinburgh derby. But I'll look forward to it. At least Kerry's not going, because every time she goes to Easter Road, they get beat. She's an absolute Jonah, so hopefully you bring us better luck. Yanks. Well, speaking of, Kerry Pollock was out at the Rangers training centre this afternoon to preview Rangers versus St Mirren. Here's what Michael Beale had to say. Here at the Rangers training centre this afternoon, Michael Beale has spoken to the press for the first time since the departure of the director of football here at Rangers, Ross Wilson. And he says for anyone concerned about the decision-making going on for the remaining games, he says it's all being handled just fine. I'm sure our board and John Bennett now will take his time to, to assess everything and, and decide what comes next. In the short term, uh, I'll oversee what happens here at the training ground day in, day out. I'm very close to recruitment staff anyway. A lot of our targets and, and the conversations are up and running, pre-season's planned. So for me, it's, uh, it, it's the loss of a, of a close ally in the club and a good friend that I enjoyed working with. But in terms of my role, I, I I just crack on as normal. With seven league games to go and a semi-final on the horizon against Celtic, the Jers boss says he won't be handing out jerseys to just anyone to get minutes under their belts. First thing is we have to keep winning and I want a strong Rangers on the team and it certainly won't devalue the shirt and just give people minutes because I think they, that they've been waiting. They have to deserve them and, uh, and we, we've got a semi-final and we want to end the season well. We want to retain the Scottish Cups. There's still a lot to play for. Within that, there, there will be uh, opportunities, but the biggest thing is that the players have to earn it on the training pitch. Rangers take on St Mirren this weekend and the Buddies could be in the top six before the game kicks off. It all takes place at Ibrox this Saturday, 3 o'clock. 
Tam got Ruffy's reaction to it yesterday, but the news of sporting director Ross Wilson leaving Rangers. We'd just like to, to get your thoughts on that one. What do you think is going yeah, on? Yeah, I think for Ross it's perfect timing. Uh, last night, I know Ross well. Ross was at Falkirk when I was there. I've kept in touch with him for many years. Um, I think initially when he came into Rangers, you know, I think he'd done a really, really good job under Stephen Gerrard. They, they recruited good players, they stopped 10 in a row. You know, they run to Europe, you know, but I think over maybe the last couple of windows, I think that Rangers have been poor. They've recruited poorly. So that's brought more attention onto him, more pressure onto him. Um, I think the fans' banners, you know, Stuart Robertson out, you know, Ross Wilson out, I think that would have hurt him as well, you know. So I think it's great timing for him uh, <coughs> and possibly the club as well, Rangers, I think, get s some money for, for him leaving. So I think Michael will be a little bit disappointed because I think Michael spoke about him, you know, in glowing terms as a Stephen Gerrard, somebody that he knows well, he trusts to bring players in. Um, but for Ross, I think it's a great move for him. You know, he's hopefully not in Forest up and he's... He's working in the Premier League next season, but I think the timing, you know, more than anything, is perfect because he's been under pressure from the supporters, and uh, a lot of supporters will be happy that he's left. And I think Ross will probably be happy he's left as well at, at this time. Yeah, we'll pick that up in a second. But there's a, a, an interesting question here, Ruffy, for you from from Hugh Scott asking Ruffy, would you think this is the right time to give Robbie McCrory a run between now and the end of the season as a uh, a former goalkeeper, I think uh, if McCrory is his third choice at Rangers, but McGregor has been blamed by some of the fans for one of the goals um, last week. McLaughlin's had his issues this season as well. Do you think he's one that could come? Uh, he's going to be there next season. The other two goalkeepers might might not be. No, What's the right no, chance? Yeah, I think uh, Michael Beale has talked him up uh, on numerous occasions when uh, he's been ever he's been questioned about the the goalkeeping position, you know, and uh, he must be doing something right in training, you know, and they must see something. He's obviously not had a lot of game time. I, I know he had an injury there for a wee while when Michael Beale was maybe thinking about getting him a game, but uh, I think Rangers have got too many big games coming up, you know, that they'll be focused on the the semi-final game, so it's not really the ideal time to throw him in. I would think he would try and give him a game, you know, a, a couple of games maybe at the end of the season, you know. Uh, I think somehow once he get thrown in at a, a Celtic Rangers game at Ibrox. Alistair Johnson, right back? No, no, it was a goalkeeper. When? For who? Uh, I think it was Main. I think Main had just for Celtic. For Celtic? Uh, right. Oh, Main. Oh, oh, Main. Scott Main, Scott uh, Main, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and so maybe that might be an ideal game, you know, if, if the league's over. You know, to say, hey, let's see, let's see how good you are. There you are. There's a, there's an old firm derby. Let's go in and see, because it happened with David Marshall over in Barcelona with Celtic. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you, when you do something like that, you find out, you know, their mentality and can they see it through. But all rave reports, you know, about McCrory, even when he's been with the the Scottish, the, the under teams, he's done particularly well. He's just not had a chance. But we're all waiting to see what Alan McGregor's going to do. You know, that's a big decision they've got, and McLaughlin as well. We keep hearing about the boy if he Preston, is it Preston? Woodman. They, they've been looking at him, and, and Michael Beale's already went on record. He's got a list. You know, so on that list, there'll be goalkeepers, you know, because all Alan McGregor has to do is chap the door and say, I'm not signing again unless I'm number one. And then they've got a decision to make, and then Chuck McLaughlin's got a decision to make because if Alan McGregor stays and they bring up somebody else, and then we're talking about McCrory, is he going to hang a bit? You know, so a lot of decisions to be made, but. These are good decisions if McCrory comes up with the goods because they definitely think he is one for the future. Tam, big advocate for youth players coming yeah. through the academy and then um, making their mark in the first team. Do you think now is the time Rob McCrory has to be playing first team football yeah. somewhere? Yeah, I, I think it should be Rangers. I think you, you know what you're getting with John McLaughlin and McGregor. You know what you're getting. I think you've got to throw them in now you know, and give them, you know, to, from now to I think the semi final. Uh, is maybe a big ask. Um, I was talking about the league game. The league game, but yeah, I think you, you maybe. How are you going to know if he's good enough if you don't play him? You know, he's been there a number of years now. He's, whenever he's been called upon, he's never let the club down. So, I think you've got to look at Robbie McCrory and say, right, is he going to be? I don't think he's going to be number one at Rangers, but is he going to be number two next season? Or is he going to be number? Three? Is he going to loan? I think. I think he's got. You've got to play him. Um, so I think you just got it right. I think at the time is right for him to go and. Maybe get some games. If he doesn't play with Rangers this season, I think he's maybe wasting his time being there next year. Yeah, he's been injured a bit this season, yeah. and we had at the, the press conference this afternoon that Rangers have got more injuries. Connor Goldson won't feature tomorrow, nor will Ryan Kent or Scott Wright or Antonio Chilwack or Ryan Jack or Red Van Yelmaz. Ruffy, another long list of injuries um, at Ibrox, but. The two that I'm particularly interested about are, are Ryan Jack and Scott Wright. Um, we'll, we'll take Ryan Jack first of all. Um, 
it sounds like Rangers are wanting to give him a new contract. Michael Beale likes Ryan Jack as a player. Do you think this injury is just so close to, to the summer could harm the, the, the possibility of him being, being offered another deal? Or do you think Beale will just go ahead and renew it? No, I think that they'll know what he, he can do. They'll, know what, they'll be watching him in training. They see him in games. You know, again, you know, I, I think all the talk about him leaving or staying or having is taken away from, you know, his performances on the park. I, I, Any time I see him on the park, he, he looks good, but he, he doesn't look great. You know what I mean? He, mm. He's a good player, he's brilliant, he's exciting to watch, but he doesn't seem to go to that next level consistently. So that's something they'll have to take on board. But I, I think the Rangers managers would rather keep him than Morellas, you know, because he's obviously got a wee bit of youth in his side and he has got fantastic ability. But, you know, it's a big decision to make. If they lose the both of them, it's going to cost them lots of money. Do you look at the rest of those injuries? Tam, Scott Wright. Um, he's got a contract as well, isn't he, Scott Wright? Um, I'm not actually sure. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not actually sure. I, I, I would need to check that one, uh, sorry. Um, but if Scott Wright hasn't been playing. Antonio Cholak hasn't been playing. Ridvan Yilma has, has struggled for games. Do you think now that the title is basically over, those are players who would have been hoping to try and get some games between now and the end of the season? And if, if, if they're injured at this point in the season, that's, that's, that's going to be critical for them. It's not a great time in the season to be injured if you're out of contract. Especially if you're looking for a new If you're out of contract club. or you're maybe not on the team, you know, because there's a new manager just come in, you know, Michael Beale's not long in the door and I think he'd maybe still be making his mind up about players and I think the best way to do that is by playing and uh, for now at the end of the season and the team doing well, I think you give yourself every opportunity of getting either a new contract, you know, or, you know, or staying longer term, so... No, I think those players in particular that you mentioned, um, we're talking about Ryan Jack, I think Ryan Jack's a, a steady player, good good squad player, but I think if you're going to overtake Celtic, or, or I don't think he's good enough. You know, I think he's he's a solid squad player. Do, do I see him playing every week? Would he get into Celtic's midfield? No. So I think that Rangers need to sign better quality that goes straight into the team. I think Ryan Jack's a handy backup. He's still you know, Scotland international. He's a Scottish international. He's a, he's a, he's a good, well, listen, he's a good player. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think if you're looking to to do better and challenge Celtic, win titles and, and, and get better and overtake Celtic, I think you need better quality. I'm not just talking about Ryan Jack, I'm talking about in forward areas and defensively because I think Celtic, Michael Beale will argue that they're not that far away, but I, I think they are quite far away. Uh, and I think he needs to sign five, six, seven players that, goes, that replace the players that are playing just now. And overall, you, you've got a better team. I don't think you can afford to, to fill, uh, sign squad squad players next season. So. Ryan Jack, I think we'll get a, we'll get a new deal. I think we'll maybe get another year or two. And he's, as I said, he's a good age, handy player to have around. But if he's playing every week, I don't think that Rangers are going to get closer to Celtic. Yeah. Rangers this weekend up against St Mirren at Ibrox. At St Mirren that are flying. So we had our reporter Patrick Mullen at the St Mirren training centre this morning to speak to Stephen Robinson. Stephen Robinson spoke this morning ahead of his side's trip to Ibrox on Saturday. Despite a 4-0 defeat already to Rangers this season, Stephen Robinson insists that his side are ready for the challenge at hand. Yeah, it's like, certainly a challenge. Anytime you, you go to Ibrox, it's a, a tough, tough game. Um, they've not lost there in a long time. But um, they have to lose sometimes, so why not tomorrow? Stephen Robinson has the chance this weekend to become the first St Mirren manager in their history to take St Mirren into the top six after the split. So fans will be delighted to hear that negotiations have started on a new contract for the Northern Irishman. It was an initial conversation. It, it hasn't really gone any further at the moment. You know, we've all just concentrated on on the top six and, and the end of the season. So, yeah, there was initial talks, but um, it hasn't gone any further at the moment. But that's obviously we've got our focus on on other things at the moment. Ruffy, can they do it? I mean, St Mirren are flying. They're looking to, to, to try and get top six. All they need is a point. If Hibs lose, it, it's done. But if, if, if they get a point at Ibrox, that's, that's them. Top six sorted. I think if they got a point at Ibrox, uh, it'd be a great result for them. It'd be a great season for them. Uh, I, I know you're, you're right in saying they are playing well. You know, they're coming off a of back, yeah, good uh, win at Tynecastle, but Rangers are different. They've got something to prove tomorrow. You know, they'll have to convince their supporters that they were a wee bit unlucky last week against Celtic. So I think the, the players, Rangers players, will be fired up for this one. So I, I can't see, I really can't see St Martin taking in out of this game. I think uh, it'll be another full house at Ibrox and they'll be wanting to win. Tom, and in, in terms of the race for top six, if you, if you look at the teams that are involved in St Martin, look as though they. They will, they, they will go there, but Livingston poor on a form, Hearts poor on a form, Hibs poor on a form, St Mirren and Aberdeen are probably the only two teams involved in that who are on, on good form. Do you think 
that that comes into it, and and the consistency of their positive performances will will help them push on in, in this period and post split when they've got that belief in the squad and that they're not losing matches. That these two teams could be you could be looking at your third and fourth for Europe. Yeah, I think that, that it's momentum at the right time in the season, and Ruffy always talks about it. You'd rather finish the season strongly yeah. and start the season strongly. And uh, you'd some clubs who have, have started Livingston, for example. You know, were up there all season. You know, I thought but into the World Cup break, I think they were sitting in fourth. You know, you think they could push for third place. They fell off a cliff over the last two months. Um, so St Martin have been. I think they've been quite steady. Probably the steadiest team out, out at the mall. They've been in round about it the whole season. Aberdeen, as we know, Barry Robson's transformed them. Um, they, they were going nowhere under Jim Goodwin. So, yeah, I, I think that Aberdeen and St Martin. You know, the way they're playing, the confidence that they've got in the squad. Uh, they would be the ones you would be looking for for third and fourth, but I th still think the Hearts and Hibs, you know, if, if Hibs can get into the top six, I don't think there's going to be a lot between them, and there's a lot of teams playing against each other in that top six, and there's a lot of big six pointers. Um, so if Hibs can get into that top six, eh, along with Hearts and Aberdeen, then I think it's going to be very, very close. And I'd, I'd even put some money in that as well, because I think they're, they're hard to beat, particularly at home. Ruffy, Stephen Robinson was talking about opening contract negotiations with the club to extend his stay. And Paisley, just how important is it for the club to, to tie tie the manager down? Because we're already hearing links of him potentially going to, to, to Hearts or maybe even Aberdeen if Barry Robson doesn't get that job. Just how important is that? Oh, most definitely. You know, you want to have a successful manager. You know, you'll see they won't just go by the results, although the results are very, very important. There's a lot of things that managers do behind the scenes. You know, training, you know, we'll talk about youth academies and he seems to tick all the boxes, you know, that's why he's there. He's already been headhunted down in England and he's come back again. So certainly, yeah, I think some of the bigger teams would be looking at him. Uh, I think he talks very well at the press conferences. You know, we've had, on the sh had him on the show a few times and he's been very, very good, you know. So, no, I think he's somebody... Uh, you, you, you tend to, a manager when they've had that kind of season that's when they get maybe another couple of years and you want to tie them down Prediction for this one Rangers St Mirren yeah, I'm going to go Rangers 3-0 I was very very close to going for one each in this game Really? I was really? I was. I, I don't know what it is I just think St Mirren will go and make it difficult for Rangers but I went for 2-1 to Rangers um, but I think this will be I don't see this being a 3-0 or job I could be left with egg in my face Monday but I think St Mirren will go there and they're playing with confidence and I think they can go and get some sort of result, but I'm going to go for Rangers just to edge it two one. And Rangers got a lot of players out injured, key players. Well, big, big take that. So, Tommy, you'd upset a few people if you if you'd gone with one one there. Um, we'll move on to the next match. Um, it's Celtic take on Kilmarnock on Sunday. I was speaking to Ange Postecoglou this afternoon at the Celtic managers press conference, um, who chimed in with his views on the Kevin Clancy situation. This week. If you look at it, it was, you know, it, was a, it was a real sort of derby game. It had a bit of everything, but it wasn't a great game. It was a game that was riddled with mistakes from both sides. Both sides. Players and, dare I say, managers made a lot, a lot more mistakes than the, the officials did on the day. So why we, we need to separate that? I mean, it's not like, um, you know, from my perspective, if anyone analyses that game and things at one moment decided that, then they're not really looking at the big picture, you know. Um, I think, from my perspective, there's a decision there. Everyone's got opinions on it. It's not fact-based because it's not like it's an offside or something you can clearly see. It's an opinion-based thing, and everyone gives their opinion. Ultimately, one person has to make the decision. Tom, a little bit of a dig on Michael Beale. I said the game riddled with mistakes from players, and dare I say, a manager. Do you think I'm having a little, a little poke at the Rangers manager there? Yeah, possibly. I think that uh, I think he's. Maybe a bit upset with, with Michael Beale, you know, his comments. Um, think that they're quite close to Celtic. You know, Celtic have, have, have wiped the floor of them this season so far. You know, they're 12 points ahead of them, I think, just now. So, listen, I think that, that Andrew's just concentrating on Celtic. Um, he knows that they didn't play particularly well last week, but as we've said in this show many times, you know, Celtic just find a way to win games. And uh, Rangers fans, Rangers players must be getting a wee bit sick of it. They've turned up and played decent, <coughs> particularly in the first half at Parkhead and they'll get in and out of the game. So, Listen, I think, I think Ange and Celtic will just motor on. They're now one game away if they win the treble. You know, if they beat Rangers in the semi-final, the treble's in the bag. So they'll just try to keep up, keep the form up, keep players fit, keep their key players fit, and, uh, and look ahead to that uh, semi-final end of the month. 
Ruffy and speaking about the Kevin Clancy situation there, do you think sometimes we're guilty of forgetting that referees are humans and can make mistakes too? Because I don't think the, the players or, or managers get anywhere near as much abuse for the mistakes they make on a Saturday. No, you're right. I think uh, the, the incident that we're talking about is obviously the Morelos goal. Yep. I think instantly everybody who saw it first time you know, thought it was a bit harsh. But I think the more and more you see it, you have to change your opinion. Either there was contact, not a big amount of contact, but certainly contact for Johnson to fall forward the way the way he did. And if it had been an outfield player, when somebody had been questioned about, why did you fall down like that? You know, he went, well, well there was contact. You know, so, you know, I think you've got to, not dwell on that, you know, you've got to look at other things in the game, you, you've got to, and I thought it was a bit unfair, you know, that uh, them questioning Clancy and taking it further, and I think they added pressure onto the referee, and the referees have got a harder job as it is, you know, they've, you've, they've got to actually make the decision, you know, and, and as Hugh McDonald said on the show, the, the referee made a decision, it wasn't a goal, and the VAR man made a decision, it wasn't a goal, so it's not a goal. You know, that's basically what they operate on. It's the, the laws of the game. You know, I think sometimes we look at things and because we think it is, you know, that decision, it's not really because it's, it's, not, in the law, it's not in the book. The referee knows that the laws of the game, 100%. We don't. And they're just interpreting what they have in the, the rule book. Because if they don't do it right, they get... People think they don't get punished. They went, oh, he should be punished. They do get punished. They, they don't get a game. You know, though, if they, they make a, an outstanding mistake, they, they won't get a game for a couple of weeks. They won't get a Premier game. They won't get a big game. So the referees are out there trying to make... If they make a mistake, they know they're going to be punished. And reporters have been very busy. Today, Celtic, of course, they take on Kilmarnock on Sunday. So we had Patrick Mullen making the, the journey from Paisley out to Ayrshire to speak to Derek McInnes at Rugby Park. Talk to Derek McInnes this afternoon, ahead of his side's fixture against Celtic on Sunday. Kilmarnock currently sit just three points off bottom of the table, and McInnes knows his side are going to need some big victories to stay in the league this season. We want to make sure we're, we're objectives are far higher than just staying in the league, but we need to deal with the here and now. And the here and now is just make sure we um, get enough points. I believe we've got the players and the squad that can do exactly that. Um, it's all right saying it and believing it, it's the other party that's supposed to go and, go and do it. Our home form has been good and we we recognise that that's going to be a real strength for us over the next wee while. Um, but we also recognise that we're probably going to have to pull a couple of big results off um, and Sunday would be one that we could, uh, we could really hang on to if we can do that. I also spoke to goalkeeper Sam Walker who believes that his side have improved and learnt from all three previous defeats this season and are in a better place this time around. I think we're in a better place than we were certainly um, from the first game, first time we played in the season um, and we've developed as a team and um, we know each other and we know the league and we know what we can offer uh, better now so I think we're, we're better placed um, to put in a performance against them. How important is home form for Kelly? Yeah, yeah, you had you had the kind of talk about it. They've, they've been great at home. Only two points away on the road to play for for them this season. But home home advantage on the AstroTurf. Do you think that maybe gives them a slight advantage? I think it does. I think it's it's crucial. Um, you spoke about it plenty of times before. Away form two points away from home. That is it's not even relegation. That is tailed off form. That is absolutely down. Um, but their home form's kept them in it. They're very strong at home. They've won a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of games at home. I don't think they'll be beating Celtic at home, but I think they'll cause Celtic problems. You know, the bounce of the ball. I think having an Astro Turf pitch at home has, has got to be a big advantage. You have every second week, I don't know if Kamala train on it or not. If they train yeah, on they it, they train on the pitch. They train on the pitch as well. Yeah. You know, every every bounce, you know, every bobble, you know, it's difficult. You know, and, and I think as a player myself, you know, you're used to playing on grass every week, and you you see this fixture coming up, and you think. Oh, so straight away you're you're in a negative position, you know, when you're going to go and play Nasser Turf because you think, oh, I hate the pitch. Play, if you give a player an excuse, they will take it all day. And players like using that excuse, you know, oh, it's Nasser Turf. But I think Kilmarnock, you know, I've shown this season at home that they can give everyone a game. And I think they will to a certain extent, but I think Celtic have got, just got too much quality. And I think if you're a technical player, you, you quite enjoy playing Nasser Turf. I think if you're a big plodder, you know, or a, or a centre half who just heads and kicks it, you maybe struggle with the turns and, and different things. I think if you're technical, you know, you can you can get on the ball and play and pass it. So I think Celtic have got plenty of technical players and they'll, they'll take care of Kamal, no bother. Prediction? Uh, three 0 with Celtic. Roughly? Yeah, I think initially it'll be it'll be tense early on, you know, quite tight, you know, till you 
the players get used to the the surface, you know. But uh, as Tam said, there, there's a lot of lot of players don't get it out of their head. You know, they go into the game going, I don't like this, can't I believe, mm. can I? And, and sometimes I've, I've seen on numerous occasions managers have selected teams uh, around, you know, who likes the surface and who doesn't like it. But again, Celtic will have too much possession for me. You know, they'll have control of the ball, or I would say maybe 70, 75%. And, uh, you know, Kilmarnock will find it very difficult to get the ball off them. You know, and I think I would like to hazard a guess that Celtic have more chances at goal, more shots at goal. Uh, so I've, I went for Celtic to win, you know, a 2 nothing, but a, a hard work 2 nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, tonight we're going to, we're getting a wee Friday night game. Tonight, Ross County versus Aberdeen, up in Dingle, and I'm delighted that Peter's still on holiday, because I know if he was here he'd be sending me up there, he, he, he loves to do that, <laughs> Dingle midweek, quarter to eight, but, and you can come straight back down after it for, for, for a Saturday game tomorrow, so thank God. He's not here, or I would be there right now, probably. Um, but looking at that one, Tom, two teams in, in a good place. Ross County, big win last weekend. Aberdeen absolutely flying, five wins in a row. How do you see this one going? Fancy Aberdeen. Um, I just think that Aberdeen at the minute have got great momentum. I think under the manager, uh, they've got guys up front who are, who are banging goals in. Duke, you know, getting a lot of attention from teams. Majovski, you know, they're keeping clean sheets. They're working hard. I always felt that Aberdeen had a, had a good pool of players, a good squad. Listen, they spent a lot of money in the summer. You know, people forget how much money Aberdeen actually spent. You know, and Jim Goodman had money to spend. And uh, he signed some quality international players. Some of these players are playing international football. So I think Aberdeen will go up there. They've back to a big crowd, you know, behind that goal. And uh, I would fancy them to, I would fancy them to beat Ross County. Ross County have shown in recent weeks that they're battling away. Great result at St. Johnson last week. You know, keeping the clean sheet to a win. So... I still fancy Aberdeen. I think Aberdeen have got the bit between their teeth. They've got a hungry manager, they've got a hungry squad of players. And I think they'll go up there and they'll win 2-0. 2-0. Time going for 2-0, Ruffy. Your prediction? Yeah, there's no doubt Aberdeen are the favourites getting into this one. But I think Ross County have got something to play for. Uh, they'll come away, they'll be buoyant with the result uh, last week, getting away from home, to getting a win there, which a lot of people didn't see coming. I don't think they'll win the game, you know, but I think they'll make it very, very difficult for Aberdeen. And uh, I don't know if Brophy's fit, but, uh, you know, I think I'm going to go for a draw on this one. I'm going to go one each because I think yeah, they'll make it difficult for Aberdeen. One each. And Aberdeen fans, in case you missed it, on Wednesday evening, um, we released an exclusive one-to-one -one interview with former Aberdeen player Alec McLeish, who was speaking with Peter Martin. We're up a level again, Real Madrid in the final. But uh, the, the teams previously, then they, they were sticky, you know. Yeah. Um, Apart from Watershy, Watershy was, um, you know, the, the the brilliant home performance, five one, and I remember the Sir Alex used to invite the old pensioners in to watch training and stuff, and get bring them in the back. There was a wee room at the back, and where he gave them tea and that, and uh, one of them was waiting on me the, the, the day after the. 5-1 and he said that away goal could be dodgy Mother well done United to come as as well Tam on, on, on Saturday do you think it's top 6 maybe still on for, 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 for Mother well if, yeah. if, 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 if Hibs losing yeah. get a chance no, I think they've left it too late Aye. I think they've left it too late to put a run together but listen I think it'd be a bonus for Mother I think you know under Stephen Hamill they looked as if they were getting relegated you know they were bottom of the league at one point so Listen, Stuart Kettlewell's come in, revitalised them, you know, same squad of players, you know, and he's got them playing some great football, they've got a striker, one of the hottest strikers probably, if not the, the hottest striker in Scottish football at the minute, Kevin Van Veen banging goals in, uh, and he will go into every game thinking he's going to score at the minute, so I would fancy Motherwell strongly in this game, uh, done the 80 one last week, but I wasn't particularly impressed with them, um, <laughs> I think Motherwell will still get the, the hunger and the desire, I don't think they'll be have the flip-flops on yet, I, I still think... They'll be pushing for that top six, particularly if the result earlier at Easter Road goes for them. You know, Hibs don't win, they're still in it. So I've went for an emphatic Motherwell win here. I'm going to go for 3 0 in Motherwell. 3 0 Motherwell? Yep. God, I, think, I think they'll battle in the United. <laughs> Roughly, would you agree? Yeah, well, I've already, I've already yeah. said earlier on, I thought yeah. Hibs had chances against oh. Dundee United and then they lost the game with the penalty late on. But no, again, Motherwell are, are flying just now, and Tam's indicated obviously the striker scoring for fun, you know, so they're getting into this game. And I don't think it, whatever Mother will do from now to the end of the season, it's 
the fans are happy. They're happy for where, for where they were and where they are now, and they'll just be looking forward to, to next year. But and I, I, I hope Wim keeps everybody on side. So I've went for them to win 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. Yeah, on Saturday's show, Tam McManus was telling us about how Max Johnson could be looking elsewhere in the summer with some links from, from Italy with, with Fabrizio Romano. But we were speaking to Stuart Kettlewell, who's not convinced the youngster will be leaving. So there's been nothing to suggest otherwise. Uh, fr from my side, there has been an offer made to, to the player. Um, and I understand that he, he may want to take time over that, but um, the simple message to Max was that, that we need him to go and keep performing exactly how he has been of late and, and, and showing people how good a player he is. Um, because sometimes that can become a wee bit of distraction, everything else that's going on in the background, but not full marks from me to, to, to a young player. Um, and how he's handled himself in the situation, but I can again assure people that we would love to have him at this club next season. Ruffy, just one final game to look at before before we close: Livingston versus St Johnson. Levy still with the, the chance of top six, huge game for them. They've given away four thousand free tickets to members of the Livingston community, but S St Johnson could be getting dragged back into a relegation battle here. What's your prediction for this? Yeah, game? again, uh, both teams know in any particular forum. You know, as far as Livingston's concerned. I thought they were looking good for a wee while to be easily top six, but that's drifted away like teams who aren't winning games. You know, I think their problem is of lack of goal scorers just now. Uh, hitting the ball in the back of the net was already discussed the difference between Motherwell. You know, they've got a striker who's scoring, you know, pretty regular. So that's what you need in these kind of games. But uh, I don't know. I, th I think uh, Livingston at home, I never saw in this at Johnson last week that would make me think they could go there and get a win. So. I'm, I'm going to tip Livingston to sort of get back on the rails a wee bit and just narrowly win this one. Score? 2-1 I think I went. 2-1 Livy. Tam? I'm going to go for one each. I don't think it's going to be a great game. Oh, well. <laughs> Short and sweet, perfect. Um, well, Livingston, they, as we've discussed, they've been struggling to score goals as of late, but uh, I took a little trip to their training to see if I could help out uh, their striking woes, and it's fair to say, Tam, you're going to enjoy this one. Oh, yes. I didn't do very well. Well, here we are at Livingston, the uh, PLZ Challenge, and I'm delighted to say the cream of Livingston Football Club is here to try and beat Ali Crawford's record of 7.4 seconds. And of course, shyness from PLZ, the greatest footballer never to be signed by anyone. Adam Binney is going to show the lads what to do. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's on camera! That is fantastic! <laughs> oh, that is brilliant! That's made my day! Here! He's in the boot with a cone in his boot! He looks like one of the dogs with the lampshade on! <laughs> Damn, listen, we've, we've spent the last days putting the, putting the good ones on when I've just I've gone through perfect bottom, bottom corner and off the post but that time I, I, I don't think I'll be <laughs> giving Livingston any help anytime soon after that no. <laughs> that was absolutely tremendous I mean I, I thought the way you went through the first three cones was exemplary <laughs> and then I don't know what you were doing with the, the second last cone when it stuck to your foot but it was comedy gold eh, for, P for Peter Martin in particular he seemed to enjoy it yeah, but we'll go from the lowest possible standard of football um, of, of me making an absolute mess of it to, to, to some of Europe's elite because last night we had the Europa League we can bring up the fixtures from last night's quarter-final ties on screen for you just now Feyenoord getting the better of Jose Mourinho's Roma 1-0 Juventus home victory over Sporting Lisbon also 1-0 Manchester United throwing it away against Sevilla two own goals in the last six minutes to draw 2 all at home to Sevilla and Bayer Leverkusen and Union Sancho was drawing one all. Um, we've got to talk about that Manchester United game roughly with two OGs in the last six minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you would have thought a team with that kind of experience in European football would be able to see that game out, you know, but obviously strange things happen in the game and unfortunately it's that boy Maguire again, you know. He's in the, <laughs> You're not liking him, are you? <laughs> he's in the, in the face of it, you know, so they'll still think they've got a chance going over there, but Seville are at home are really, really hard to beat, so it, I would think Seville would be going for a draw. For the second leg, Tom, who do you, who do you see coming through? Do you think Man Manchester United... No, 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 Seville will be kicking themselves that there's no way goals. Uh, but I, I still think Man, you've got the quality to go over there and win. Seville have not been great this season in the league, 
we're just starting to pull a wee bit from, from the relegation battle and I think my new way for home suits them. The pace and the counter-attack, Martial, Rashford. Rashford I still as, as he? Oh, yeah. well, not for him then. Uh, <laughs> but I still fancy my new to get through. I think they've got, they've got too much. But Sevilla, though, we were discussing this the other day, roughly, that they are, record, yeah, yeah, the, 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 they've won this competition more times than, than anyone else. You know, yeah. that, that counts for anything, that experience in, in these matches. Well, they'll fancy themselves at home. There's no doubt about that. You know, their home crowd and everything will be right behind them. You know, but uh, I think Man United are still, will still be there or thereabouts, but uh, they're going to be a hard one. Yeah, we can hear from Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag, who thinks his side should have taken their chances at 2-0 up. Get our um, opportunities. Uh, to score the third goal and I think yeah like in the last 10 minutes was everything looked like was against us but yeah uh, what I said sometimes you have such nights um, uh, but yeah we have to make sure uh, we learn from from such nights and but yeah sometimes it's also bad luck and we have to accept it Tom who's winning it? who's winning the Europa League Phil thing <sighs> I'm, gonna, I'm still going to stick with Man United yeah, uh, I fancy the Man United West Ham double, uh, but I tell you who's who's playing well. They're pulling us out. Fiorentina. They they seem to be battling everybody every week in that Conference League. So I'm going to stick with two English teams. I think Man United for the Europa League, West Ham, David Moyes for the Conference. Ruffy, now I'm sticking with Roma. Uh, I know they get beat one nothing there, but uh, Marino's got a fantastic record in European football. That's why all these clubs all take him because they know he's got that kind of pedigree. I want to say Davy, yeah, because of West Ham because we. We know him quite well in the show, so yeah, it'll be Roma and West Ham. Yeah. So Roma and West Ham, Manchester United, United. West Ham, yeah. West Ham, perfect. Um, just before we finish, let's take a look at our competition for this week. Again, as you can see, Tam dressed for the occasion, ready for a wee game of golf. Um, you have the opportunity to win the prize, well, prize if you can call it that, a point alongside Tam, up against Alan Ruff and Frank McIverney. This week's competition is a chance for you to play a round of golf with Tam McManus against myself and Frank McAvenny. To enter, you must subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel and answer this simple question. Which World Cup did Frank McAvenny and Alan Ruff both play in? Good luck. Good luck. Discuss, you want, want to play at Walk Loman for this one? You're saying, oh, like my fair, like my fair. I always use his contacts and get on a decent course. Obviously, we're, we're out there, we're doing it, uh, and it'd be nice if somebody's listening in who we're going to Girvan anyway. I mean, that's a certainty, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we can't turn that down. But it'd be nice if we could go to a right big. Big, big club. So, if there's anybody out there listening who have got contacts, you need a bug. Get in touch with Ruffy then. Okay, Walk Loman? Is it flat? Aye, aye, it's not too bad, but Buggy's fantastic. Could you putt? Yeah. Can you putt from 90 yards like you? No, no, I'd have to use Ruffy's got, the, Ruffy's got the yips chipping, so he like putts from like 100 yards and all that and just smashes like, <laughs> yeah. like pitch and putt. <laughs> I that's it, that's it. Coordination. Coordination. <laughs> Coordination. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, well, anyway, before we, before we finish, we've got to bring you the quiz answer. So this week's quiz question, which we'll bring on screen for you just now. Um, what is the record for the most goals scored in a Scottish Premiership season by one club? I said Roughly 93. 105 Celtic under Brendan Rodgers. It was 106 Celtic under Brendan Rodgers in that season. Tam's a goal away. And they have the that chance. Sums me up with Dave. By the way, they're on, they're on 98 this season. So, oh, so, oh, so, oh, so oh, they'll they, they surpass that. Eight goals in seven blit games. I bought it in got about 120 odd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that same season, I think they set the. They're not set the record points down that season as well, 106. Yeah, I think they were un un invincible, didn't they? Yeah, didn't, didn't lose the game. So that was a fantastic Celtic side. Plenty of debate going on whether this, this current team um, is better than them or not. But that's for another day. Um, anyway, that concludes our Friday. Today's football show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to make sure you do not miss a single bit of action. We'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday football show. Peter will be back. The gaffer is back. I'm finished. That's me. Five shows done this week. Finally, you can get your man back. I've absolutely loved having you as our audience and I've loved having Tam and Ruffy by my side. Thankfully, the ratings will now go through the roof. <laughs> don't, don't be daft the, the, ratings, the ratings have been great all week simply because you got a more handsome presenter than the previous one <laughs> but <laughs> you like that listen it's not difficult so that's, that's right uh, anyway thank you very much again for being our audience and thank you to Ruffy and Tam for everything they have done for us this week from me thank you and goodbye <laughs>